Um, anyways, uh, uh, a little bit of uh, personal history uh, 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 was that myself, um, you know, back in uh, 1996, um, you know, I uh, was looking, actually back then, uh, you know, even though I treated a lot of uh, cancer cases before 1996, uh, prior to 1996, I took a view of treating cancer as though I was treating cancer. You know, when a cancer patient came in, I forgot that there was a person there, even though I did a lot of um, alternative uh, treatment, I was attacking, I was attacking the cancer. And um, it was back in 1996 that I found my own, some of my own markers were high. In fact, there, there's a test called AMAS, anti-malignant antibody uh, assay. And uh, just for fun, I thought I sent a sample of my own blood in, and the result came back very high. It was frightening. It was frightening. And, uh, and then right away I said, gosh, you know, physician heal myself. I've never really gave my, given myself a thorough check. Immediately I put myself through all the testing, so I put my patients through. And I had a, a parameter called LDH that was in the thousands, and usually it should only be in the hundreds. And uh, I said, good gracious, I better look at myself a little bit more carefully. And then uh, I realized that I was a little bit tired uh, uh, when, you know, in, in the middle of the day of the practice uh, and also had about two weeks worth of night sweats. You know, and I knew then night sweat, I thought I was maybe just had too many blankets on, you know, just like any other patient, never took notice. And then I realized that it could have been something what we call B symptoms. B symptoms are, sim are signs when your immune system is being overwhelmed, okay? And B symptoms came from the fact that maybe the B lymphocytes are being overly <coughs> stressed, all right? And uh, I went for MRI and I found a 1.5 centimeter uh, uh, mass in my own neck. Talk about saving your own neck. Um, and, and my choice was, of course, to do a needle biopsy and maybe to go on to uh, chemotherapy uh, and retire. And maybe I said, gosh, this is terrible because I've seen wonderful results of that. You know, the reason why I could go on was because there were some cases that had very good results, including actually one of the pancreatic cancer in Vancouver uh, that I co-worked with this uh, uh, oncologist that had fantastic results. And, uh, uh, and it, was, it, was, it was another turning point in my life. So I decided to, uh, to uh, really change my lifestyle and, um, you know, uh, uh, treating myself. And, uh, uh, and then I realized there are a lot of other things to work on, including uh, the, the emotional aspect, the uh, attitude. Uh, that was, uh, you know, I learned about Dr. Symington's uh, uh, um, psychotherapy uh, when I was in, in, in Bastyr. And I thought, oh, come on, you know, how can you talk someone into getting well? And uh, that's when I realized that having a, a positive attitude uh, when, 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 when you have the, the right mindset is so important in, uh, in healing. And uh, again, uh, you know, other than learning more about being um, positive, maintaining a positive attitude, uh, being assertive, uh, taking control and uh, not being afraid of uh, doing, uh, of taking steps forward, uh, you know, and that was when I started not only to empower myself, but also went ahead and empower a lot of my patients to take positive steps. If it's surgery, if we lay everything on the table, that is the right thing to do. Don't regret a single minute and, and go forward. But make sure that we rationalize everything, take look at everything without leaving a single stone unturned and step forward and try your best to have all of the angles and basics covered. And that is very important in cancer management and it's really no big deal. We all get cancer one of these days. In fact, another lesson that I learned was that I remember way back when I did a lot of autopsies in Medicine Head General Hospital they were at least over half of the corpse that we did. 
that we found signs of cancer. And these people never been diagnosed or known to have cancer. Never in a million years would they have thought of having cancer. Like, amazingly, I also learned from Dr. Block, with his 35 years of oncology uh, experience, I was surprised. He said, you know something, a lot of these women who are diagnosed of, of ovarian cancer, they don't really have ovarian cancer. A lot of them really have a condition called peritoneal carcinomatosis. In fact, these, I remember back then, these are these whole hunk of grape-like nodules that we yank out from these people's peritoneum. And they were hard like a piece of rock. They are like tiny little pebbles. Cancer lumps won't give because the cells are so packed and they're so dense, you know. And these people live comfortably, you know. Uh, one, uh, one, another. Uh, we learn a lot of things from patients, you know. One lesson to learn is, was that I have a patient and I'm still treating him, and this patient was known to have colon cancer. And interestingly enough, he never responded to conventional treatment. He never responded to immunological treatment, and yet his tumor marker would be climbing, 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 climbing. And it's been three years now. His CEA has climbed up to over 3,000. You know something amazingly, when they repeated the CAT scan finally, only a few months ago, and one of the oncologists that his regular oncologist thought, gosh, I'm, I have my hands up. I don't know what to do with you anymore, Randy. And said, why don't you go and see this oncologist who is who's a little bit more investigation a little bit more investigative and this turned out to be an oncologist who is very open-minded and in investigative and yet she is really a specialist in feminine type of cancer in female cancer and at first he was a little, puzzled, a little bit puzzled why he's seeing this girl and when this oncologist looked at his CT film he said you know something I don't understand this this looked you're a man, but your CT looked like you have ovarian cancer. Then it dawned on everybody that we're looking in the wrong place. In fact, this fellow might not have colon cancer. What he might have is really peritoneum carcinomatosis, which can also happen in men. It dawned on people, oh my goodness, we better do another tumor marker. Guess what? I look back in his records. Not very good doctor. And I realized that I did do a C125 on him by mistake, which is meant to be, you know, a mark of ovarian cancer. And I did not look at it any further because I thought my staff made a mistake, that's all. And it turned out he had a high mark of ovarian cancer. So right away, we said, okay, we're going to have to switch. So right away, we plunge into very, very intensive immuno. Immuno, immunotherapy instead of trying to kill the cancer because from what I've learned from all these wonderful people who had a lot of experience with this so-called carcinomatosis is that you cannot kill them. This, can, this type of cancer you cannot kill. So there's no point in dropping an atomic bomb. There's no point in going in with machine guns. You have to be, to be nice to them. You have to train them to turn them into differentiated cells instead. You have to try to do something to stop them from spreading, from crawling around the organs. And then we have to really concentrate on beefing up our police force and move in. We have to rely a little bit heavy on our immune system to kill them. And news was only last week, first time ever, I couldn't believe this, his tumor marker dropped by 500.